How's it going, guys? And welcome to the Bodybuilding.com live workout today. Your host today, Dr. Thor. My name is uh, Dr. Caleb Redden. I'm a sports medicine physician and also the team doctor for Caged Muscle. And today I'm going to take you guys through a workout that I love. And this is based around time under tension, so time under load. How long are you actually doing work during your workouts? So today we're going to be doing sets. We're going to do three sets for biceps three sets for triceps, and each set is going to consist of one minute, and it's going to be as many reps as possible with a 30 to 45 second rest in between. The reason I like this workout or this training principle is because if, number one, if you just need to change something different from the out of the ordinary, this is going to be longer than you're generally used to training for each set. In, in, uh, in the case of most bodybuilding workouts, say you're doing three sets of 10 reps, that's probably going to take you about 30 to 35 seconds. If you're in a powerlifting uh, wor uh, working set, you know, say you're doing seven sets of three or seven sets of five or whatever, that's about the same amount of time doing work, about 30, 35 seconds. So today we're going to try to double the amount of work you do in that amount of time. So this is a very good workout if you're someone who's pressed for time, like I am generally with my schedule being crazy. I can get it in, get it done, and do a lot of work in the amount of time that I'm in the gym. Or another really great reason to use this is if you've had injuries. So when I'm helping people rehab after injuries, orthopedic injuries, a lot of times they're not quite ready yet for the heavier loads, but they want to get that solid pump and that, uh, you know, that deep tissue burn. This is an exercise, or these, these exercises will help you to increase the eccentric load, which is the muscle lengthening under tension. That helps break down muscle tissue and helps you hypertrophy or gain size and strength. So this is a great, a great tool to utilize if you're recovering from injury. So way to shake it up and a way to, to train after injury. So um, again, I want to thank bodybuilding.com for, for having me today. Uh, love that site. Love the information that they provide to people. It's definitely way more than just supplements. It's a place where you can learn about nutrition and health and get great workout ideas, things like this. So awesome. Love bodybuilding.com. And uh, Cage Muscle, of course. Before I got started today, uh, I had a, a pre-workout supplement that's got caffeine in it and some vasodilators so that I got enough blood and oxygen moving to my muscles today so that I can get the most out of my workouts. And today, throughout my workout, I'm going to be sipping on um, some Amino Synergy. It's what I like to drink during my workouts to keep me hydrated and keep me focused. So. We're going to get started. I usually start every workout with a dynamic warm-up, and today, since we're doing biceps and triceps, um, we're going to work on wrist, elbow, and shoulder mobility to start with. So just going to get some, and dynamic, by the way, dynamic warm-up is just movement, really, kinetic. You don't want to do a static warm-up, so just doing static stretching is not the right way to warm up. So we're going to hit a couple of curls here until you start to feel some warmth in the biceps and the triceps and then we'll move on. Some wrist mobility. I broke my wrist when I was in college. Did not go see a doctor, um, which Trek, I'm sure you're watching this. I apologize for not telling you about this 20 years ago when I should have my team doc in college. Um, I work with that guy now. It's really awesome. He's one of my mentors and one of my partners in that work. But anyway, I broke my wrist and did not go see a doctor about it. And so now I have some clicking and catching and some pain when I when I lift. And so it's important for me to really get some good wrist mobility before I get started. Hey Caleb, we got a question that came in from yeah. YouTube. What are the benefits of a dynamic warm up? Hey, yeah, benefits. So we've learned. Thank you for the question. Obviously, YouTube shout out. We've learned that a static warm-up, so just stretching, right? So if I was doing a static warm-up, it'd be like stretching my flexors. Um, we've learned that it actually decreases the elasticity on the muscle group and it actually reduces your ability to perform. So a dynamic warm-up where you're moving the joint is gonna be a lot more, it's gonna assimilate the motion that you're gonna do, gets blood moving into the joints, into the muscles, and it helps you to be a lot more um, flexible during your training sessions. Oh, I got to, speaking of YouTube, got to shout out to my boys, uh, Titan and Carter and all their little buddies that are at my house today watching this workout. Love you guys. Better be doing some push-ups while you're watching this. 
All right, that feels pretty good. Gonna hit some jump rope, some burpees, get moving. I try to keep my workouts uh, moving hard enough that I'm breathing heavy the whole way through. So I apologize if I'm huffing and puffing on the mic, but that's my goal. I always wanna be having a hard time talking during my training sessions. So, first exercise we're gonna do today is gonna be just a regular cambered bar curl. And remember, this workout today, we're doing biceps and triceps, but this training modality, you can use this for anything. So shoulders, legs, this is really tough with leg day. Back, it doesn't matter the body part. You can do these minute long AMRAP sets and it's a, it's a great training modality. So the other thing is, if you're someone who's working out at your, at your home, this is something that hopefully you'll be able to do at home too. So I'm just using really simple things today. Dumbbells, a cambered bar, some rope press, but you can do that with, um, you know, the other stuff we do today, you can do with bands as well. So, all right, I'm gonna wait for this, as this clock's warming up here. I'm gonna start it at a minute and go a minute and try to do as many reps as I can. And then I'm gonna rest for about 30, 45 seconds. And then start again. Man, you'll feel it after about 30, 35, 40 seconds. It starts to get hot. Woo, getting hot. <sighs> On uh, YouTube, Paul wanted to know, just jumping back to that, uh, how much time do you spend doing a dynamic warm-up before you start working Depends out? Depends on the body part. <laughs> I've had, 
So if it's back or legs, it's a 15 minute warm up, easy. If it's shoulders, it's 15 minutes, biceps, triceps, I'm like two minutes to five minutes. And then I usually do a, a ramp up set. So I increase in weights up to my working sets. That counts as your dynamic warm up. All right, that's been about 45 seconds. So we're gonna get into it again. Man, about that 35, 40 second mark, it really starts to burn. Uh, Omkar on YouTube wants to know, can you over, uh, can over training reduce arm growth? That is not a 30 second question answer. Um, can arm training, over training reduce growth? Short answer, yes. My guess is you're not overtraining. That's pretty tough to do in reality. Here we go. Last set. Oh, yeah. Alright, that's three sets, camber bar curls, minutes at a time. You notice that my cadence slowed and I had to take some breaks in the middle. That's tough, man. That is a tough, tough way to start. And you're going to feel it on that eccentric as you're coming down. So right, the, the muscle is lengthening. The more reps you do, the harder that gets. That is double tough. Alright, moving on. Hey Caleb, a question uh, coming in on YouTube from Jim. On the camber bar, should we supinate or pronate the wrists Good to question. take tension off the elbow tendon tie and area? Okay, I'm gonna reiterate your question a little bit. So elbow tendons, there aren't any elbow tendons, right? So you have muscle tendons, bones, ligaments. So there aren't any tendons that are holding the elbow together. Ligaments hold the elbow together. How do you take the pressure off of the tendons in the elbow joint? So and we'll talk about supination. So the main supinator of the upper extremity is your biceps brachii. This is supination. This, like you're holding a cup of soup, supination. Bicep is responsible for supination. Main supinator, okay? Flexion is just bringing the elbow closer to the body. It's not the biceps. It's the brachialis and the brachioradialis. Those are the two big elbow flexors, okay? So with a supinated grip on the cambered bar, I'm working on trying to improve my, so that's actually just flexion really is what I'm working on, just flexion. The next one we're moving into is a hammer curl. Again, just flexion, brachioradialis and uh, brachialis. 
And then you've got the coracle brachialis, which is a muscle at the top that helps you to flex the shoulder, but we're not working on that today. I'm gonna hit a cross body supinating curl that's designated just at isolating the bicep. So those are the exercises, right? So the mechanism of action of the flexion is gonna be brachialis and some biceps, but that's with your hands. doesn't matter if they're open or closed, pronated or supinated, flexing at the elbow. That's one thing. Slowing it down at the end ranges of motion are gonna protect the tendons. So if you overextend and you do a jerk motion, that's when you're gonna tear tendons. Ballistic motion tears tendons. And then the mechanism of action that we're working on with each of these individual groups changes the muscle group that we're focusing on. So uh, next we're gonna go to the hammer curls and that's gonna be arm flexion again. So brachioradialis, biceps brachii and brachialis. Here we go, moving on. I talk way too much. It's part of my blessing and a curse. Um, so I'm probably gonna answer way more than you might need in those questions, but I wanna make sure you're getting the right information. So again, tendons go from muscle to bone. Ligaments go from bone to bone. So the, the big thing you wanna work, uh, look at when you're training is protecting your tendons. Your ligaments, for the most part, are gonna be okay in these less dynamic motions. If you're doing a CrossFit workout where you're running and moving a lot, you have a higher risk of tearing up your ligaments. Whew. I think we're gonna hit the 25s on this. Also not, not a big ego day, right? So I'm not curling 80 pound dumbbells. These are small dumbbells, but after a minute worth of a load, you're gonna feel it. I'm sitting on these because I wanna be able to try to isolate the swing on the motion. So if I'm doing them at the same time, right, I wanna to try to limit the amount of swinging. So I'm gonna sit so I can put my back against this. All right, we'll go for a minute. Heavy now. How much rest between exercises? Question from YouTube. YouTube, shout out to YouTube. So I'm trying to go 30 to 45 seconds in between my sets. In between my exercises, it's whatever you can do to keep moving. So like I set this up all today so that I could move from one to the next quickly so I can have this workout done in time for the live. But really, you wanna to try to improve efficiency, right? So I try to like line things out before I go in so that I know where I'm going from one to the next so that I'm not wasting time. Okay, here we go. We got about 10 seconds. So I would say the var it varies between exercises, but I would say between sets, don't rest more than about a minute. Yeah. So I'm gonna do double arm until I can't, and then I'll switch to single arm if I have to. seconds.
this shirt's gonna have to come off. It's getting hot. <laughs> yeah. Man, those arms are tight. About 10 seconds, we're gonna hit this last set. And then this shirt's coming off. Three of those, moving on to some bicep supination curls. Hey Caleb, we got a question coming in from on Twitch from Demac88. For these AMRAP sets, how important is form toward the end when you're starting to become more fatigued? <laughs> Should you try to cheat the motion a bit? You noticed that, did you? I mean, I think that if you can try to stay clean on your reps, that's obviously better. Um, don't worry, I'll be careful with my mic here. I was given strict instructions to be cautious when removing any articles of clothing. Obviously, you want to try to maintain form as much as you can, but I'm telling you that after 30 seconds, you're going to get pretty smoked. And it's better to go for the time. It's better to maintain the time on this because if you can cape, keep that cadence and maintain the time, it's going to be better. So you can see that like on the end there, as I was like, my the eccentric motion, right? So like, as I'm letting the weight down, my arm is so fatigued. It's, it's at the end, it's like just dropping. And then I'm trying to swing it just to get it up there. But the truth is, like I'm, di I'm dying. Like this is just destroying my muscles. So am I going, am I going for to try to look, for, like look pretty on my curls there for the last 15 seconds? No, I'm just trying to hang on for dear life. So if you can do it strict and make it beautiful the whole way through, do that. Maybe in a, couple more months if I keep doing this every week maybe I'll get to that point where I can go a minute and then at that point I'll go from a minute to a minute and a half on YouTube crafty f8 uh, crafty f8 this is Caleb's son Carter I want to say hi to him I love you brother love you buddy my boy Carter hopefully you guys are doing push-ups while you're watching this huh <laughs> all right here we go bicep soup curls Focusing again this on bringing my pinky towards the, the ceiling, right? So supination, gonna really isolate the bicep. Try to get a good pinch in there. Again, as I get fatigued, it's gonna end up just being holding on for dear life, but, and I might have to drop the weight down to the 20. Again, no ego on this one. Here we go. And I'm gonna do alternating arms so I can really get that pinch. in there that's for sure
We got a few comments about the wrist straps. Uh, benefits of them? You're using them at first and not now? Yeah, I've got, I had a fracture in my wrist and so sometimes mo movement at my wrist causes pain on heavier weights. These lighter weights, it doesn't bother me as much. And I noticed about halfway through that my hands were starting to fatigue, like the actual grip strength was decreasing on me because of the pressure. So I got rid of them. But if I'm going on a heavy day, I got to wear wrist straps because otherwise the next day I'm wrecked at work and I can't hold needles and syringes to, you know, just my wrists hurt. So one of those perks of being old and being an injured athlete, sometimes you got to wear a bunch of safety gear. That's a whole nother topic though. We can talk about what wearing that gear does to prevent injury, very little. But what it may do to improve your function, it's good. Good outcome, good data. Oh man. I think we got the most important question from YouTube just now. What is the appropriate number of sets to train before removing one shirt? Who asked that? <laughs> when you feel that heat, when you're getting warm, when you feel like you got something that uh, is worth looking at, I might put the shirt back on later. <laughs> All right, last one. Let's do it. Another part of why this workout's good is you just have to stay in it, right? So like at 30, 45 seconds, my arms are on fire and I just want to drop them. And it's working on the mental fortitude, right? So building that mental strength to stay through it, to stay committed. Let me tell you something, inspiration and motivation come and go. You're gonna wake up some morning, you're not gonna feel inspired, you're not gonna feel motivated, but if you're committed, if you're committed, truly committed, that's how changes occur. So I made a commitment to myself to come in here and do this workout today, one minute sets, commitment. Now halfway through that last set, my motivation was gone. I already felt like I was used up, but I'm gonna stay in it, stick with it, and building that mental strength in the gym, you can then parallel that into your life so you can get stronger outside of just lifting weights. All right, so. We've hit our camber bar curls, hammer curls, our bicep iso curls. Now we're gonna move on to our tricep exercises. We're gonna start with the tricep press down and I'm gonna wrap up my wrist again just to make sure it doesn't hurt with that ulnar deviation. So as your pinky comes towards the ulna, that's called ulnar deviation. The wrist bone that I broke is up in here. Sometimes that bothers me on that ulnar styloid. So I'm gonna wrap up again and we'll see how this goes. Question from YouTube, Doctor, what are your thoughts on static stretching in between sets? Um, what are my thoughts? I mean, if it's something that, uh, I need a carabiner, here we go. If it's something that you wanna do, 
nothing wrong with it. It's, uh, I mean, I guess you should preface the question on, are my thoughts, you know, do I think that it's gonna help you get bigger and stronger? Probably not. Is it something that may make you feel better between sets? Absolutely, so you can stretch. There's nothing wrong with a static stretch in between your sets. Um, it's not gonna reduce injury prevalence. It's not gonna uh, you know, necessarily make you grow unless you're stretching under tension, right? So there's some evidence that stretching under tension can improve work. So like if you're doing calf raises, right? Say you're doing calf raises and you, your rest period in between your sets, you keep the load on your calves and you have stretch stress receptors, Golgi tendon apparatus that are being activated. I think there's some evidence that supports that improving training quality. But as far as just stretching in between my sets in here, I'm not gonna worry about it because I know that now I'm moving from, you know, to an antagonistic muscle group. So if I'm truly getting a tricep extension, I'm stretching my bicep to its max capacity. When I'm doing my curls, I'm stretching my tricep. So I'm not too worried about stretching in between my sets. Perfect timing. One minute, rope press downs. And again, you can do this with a band. If you, I brought a black band. You can just throw that over a door frame if you're working out at home and you're just doing a tricep press down. I will mention, kind of as I'm talking here, people are always asking me how to isolate the different heads of the tricep. I got bad news for you. <laughs> you can't isolate the head of the tricep because it all forms into one conjoint tendon that inserts on the elbow. So as long as you're extending the elbow, you're activating all the heads of the tricep. The way you manipulate the tricep muscle group is by orientation in space at the shoulder. So whether you're flexed, <laughs> flexed at the shoulder or extended at the shoulder. So right now I'm extended at the shoulder. My elbows are towards my body. Towards the end of this workout, we'll, dif we'll differentiate the length of the tricep. <sighs> Hold on. minute so right so if the tricep inserts up there on the scapula shoulder blade right now I'm in a I'm in a shoulder extended position hyperextension extension flexion we'll work on a flexion position where I'm doing a tricep extension overhead stretches the tricep to its full capacity that's the way to vary your exercises with the tricep is by lengthening or shortening the muscle based on its origin at the scapula and the humerus that's 30 seconds. We're gonna jump back into it. Set number two, tricep extensions. never fails that's when I start feeling that burn so that means these are the reps that make it really different than my other workouts this is that space that I don't really get into as often the type of pain that's physician recommended medically advised pain <laughs> pain that helps you grow on twitch um yoga loves star i ask is it okay to work out biceps and triceps on the same day absolutely synergistic or antagonistic push pull or pull pull push push so today i'm doing a flexion extension people will do both so they'll do like back and buys on the same day that's, an, uh, that's a synergistic. Chest and tries on the same day, synergistic. Or you can flip that and do antagonistic like I'm doing today. But yes, short answer. You can work biceps and triceps in the same day. Here we go. Third set.
Yeah, buddy, come on. Yeah. Uh. Uh. Woo. Man, I felt it on that last one. Ah. All right, that's that. Now we're gonna do some standing uh, overhead extension. So that one was keeping that tricep in a more neutral position. Next we're gonna walk and do an overhead position. On Facebook, Tiger Gillette wants to know how many times per week are you doing this workout? This workout, like just biceps, triceps, just once. But this training modality, like every day. So I'm trying to hit these minute long sets every day, whether it's back day, bicep day, leg day, because I'm trying to increase my aerobic capacity, train my short or my fast and my slow twitch muscle groups. And uh, I've got an opportunity coming up in the spring that's gonna require me to be able to hold a contraction a little bit longer. And so I'm really working on right now, my training focuses on not necessarily getting bigger, but getting faster, being more agile and being able to hold that level of aerobic threshold a lot longer. Yep. So overhead, tricep extension. You can do this with a dumbbell or with a band or with a rope like this. I'm gonna have to adjust this weight. It's not gonna make too much. But this puts the tricep in a fully, fully stretched position overhead like this. Off the way a little bit. Leave your ego at the door on this one. Yeah, those triceps are feeling hot. Make sure you're getting that full extension. You don't want to leave out the Anconius. Look that one up my favorite muscle group. The Anconius, responsible for the last three to five degrees of extension at the elbow. Look that one up. Nope. A-N-C-O-N. I think it's E-U-S, maybe I-O-U-S. Anconius. I'm a doctor, man. I can't spell and I can't write. One more of these bad boys, then we're gonna move on to some diamond push-ups. So again, I had tricep press down, overhead press, and then when I'm doing my diamond push-ups, you can see the tricep's gonna be in three different orientations in space to try to maximize as much of that muscle fiber as possible. All right, let's get it. Let's have it, as Chris Gethin would say. Let's have it.
30 seconds. Almost on the dot every time. Caleb, this is a great uh, general question from Nick. Uh, what is the benefit of using time rather than reps on these sets? It's just a different modality. I'm not counting my reps, but I think a lot of times when you set your workouts based around reps, you shortchange yourself. A lot of times people aren't using enough weight, so they'll hit, prime example, they're gonna do three sets of 10, right? They get to 10, and then maybe they could have done four sets of 10, maybe they could have done five sets of 10, Maybe they could run three sets of 15 without weight. So that it takes one of the variables out of your training, right? So like here, I'm not worried about changing my weight. It's the same weight. I'm not worried about changing the number of reps. I'm just going for time. So it's just one way to isolate the muscle group a little bit differently and allow you to get a different, uh, a different feeling. So really, I wouldn't say one is better or worse than the other. Okay. So this last one, we're gonna do some diamond push-ups. Um, you can use a, a ball, you know, like a, a medicine ball, a BOSU ball to do this. Um, you can do it just on the ground. I have a, it kind of bothers my joints to do push-ups just straight on the ground. So I'm gonna use the dumbbell so that I can keep my wrists in a more neutral position. Um, again, just working around my injuries. So here we go. This one's gonna be a little harder to look up and see. tough. I'm going to probably end up having to drop down to my knees to finish these. Oh man. Either that or end up with a face plant, which <laughs> that'd be real good. Yeah, it's nothing but comedy here today, guys. <laughs> Watch the doc land on his face. What does your uh, daily nutrition look like? Protein, carbs, and fats. Perfect. I eat plants. I eat animals. I try to eat healthy fats. I try to limit my processed foods, packaged foods, try to limit my sugars, um, but really my nutrition is very, very balanced and very, very basic. We can talk about that until the cows come home, but most of my nutrition isn't gonna be, wow, holy cow, he's doing something so different than everybody else. And maybe I am doing something different than everybody else, but I just eat a balanced diet. And not the, not the 1980s Kellogg's commercial balanced diet where they're like, this is part of a balanced breakfast and they've got, white toast with butter and cereal with milk and orange juice and you know that's not a balanced meal that's all carbohydrate and sugar so that's not what i'm talking about Whew, about five seconds when you hit this again can one of you guys give me a like a, a minute so i don't have to look up so give me like a 30 second mark and a minute mark all right Oh. 
smoked. Sweating. What's next? Give me another question. <laughs> uh, we had a question. Uh, should you take uh, creatine pre or post workout? Oh, that's a good question. Um, it doesn't really matter, though, to be honest. Um, I like to take it before because that's what fits my lifestyle better. If I try to remember to take it any other time of the day, I'll forget it. And P.S. I do use creatine, but the only creatine I've been able to use is CreaClear. The rest of the time, if I use creatine, I make it about three months and my kidneys start to, to hurt. I start getting a, acute tubular necrosis and my creatinine level goes up too high. So um, for the last 15, 20 years that I've been trying to cycle through creatines, I usually can only make it about six weeks before I have to stop. But I've been using CreaClear for the past six months um, off and on and have yet to have any bump in my kidney elevation. So, so that's my go-to. I'm definitely sandbagging on this last set. This is the last one right here. Give me that minute mark. Man, I was about to ask for what you do to come spot me. All right, there it is. Minute long sets, AMRAP, working on the biceps, triceps, brachialis, coracobrachialis, brachioradialis, and coneus, triceps. And actually, I felt a lot in that in my last set of my chest as well. Like, oh, those diamond push ups, my chest was getting burned up, anterior deltoids. I'm telling you, that's a heck of a workout. It's quick, so we finish, you know, at 55, so really about 50 minutes if you take out all my blabbing and sandbagging and explaining different things. So you can get that done quickly. You can get that done efficiently. Very simple exercises. And I promise you that your eccentric load will increase. You can have a gnarly pump. I mean, right now my, my arms feel just like they're, like a Cherokee drum, man. They are tight, tight, tight. So excellent workout, super fast. Hit me up. Let's hear some questions. Uh, here's a question uh, that came in. Should I hit failure every set when training biceps? No. You don't need to hit failure every set when you're training biceps. I like to because it's what I like to do. I feel like if I'm not hitting at least failure or getting close to it, then I'm not working as hard as I should or could be. But do you have to hit tricep or any muscle group? Do you have to hit failure? No. You don't have to hit failure on every set. Uh, this question from Liza on Facebook. Uh, any starter tips for all the ladies out there wanting to build their buys and tries? Liza, that's awesome. I have a patient that's 55 years old, never lifted a weight in her life. In the last two years, she's lost 150 pounds. 150 pounds. She's no longer on her blood pressure medication. She's no longer on diabetic medication. She's no longer on cholesterol medication. Her back doesn't hurt anymore. Her knees feel a lot better. And I wrote her a program that was very, very basic. So as simple as it gets, just moving through normal ranges of motion, right? So if you have a joint, it has a normal range of motion. So the knees flex and extend. The hips are gonna flex and extend. Biceps, triceps are gonna help flex and extend at the elbow. Chest, shoulders, back. Everything you think about the joints that you have, moving those joints through normal range of motion and doing so with resistance. So we grab this band in reality if you're just starting out just learning how to do mobility work right stand on a band to see what that feels like to just flex at the elbow 
And then you can even just stand on it like this and extend at the elbow, right? Same thing with the shoulder. Above the head, press, down, forward raise, side raise, bend over, rear raise. Like all those things are very simple motions. That's a great place to start if you're a beginner. It's just bringing your joints to their normal ranges of motion with resistance. Do it every day. Uh, Dr. Redden, thank you so much for uh, coming out. Uh, one last question, how can people find you? Excellent, yeah, I really appreciate the opportunity to be here. Bodymillion.com, um, amazing company. I love the product that they present to people, to the public. It's not just products that you can purchase, it's the information, it's the sense of community, it's the inspiration, it's the motivation. So Bodybuilding.com, thank you so much for having me. Cage Muscle, a company that I believe in, um, again, with the products, as well as the information and the content that they provide. You can check out BB, uh, BBCom and Cage Muscle all week. They're having tons of deals, sales for Black Friday um, to help out with information, content, products. You can find me on Instagram. So my Instagram handle is musledoc underscore KR. And I try to put out quality content for people that's unbiased, that's objective, and that's very hopefully simple. I try to bring complicated subjects and break them down. I try to provide training exercises and nutritional advice. And then I sneak peek into a day in the life of a doctor and what it's like to try to get to this position that I'm at. I'm a non-traditional guy. I started out working in construction and in the oil field and um, moved into medicine and, and tied athletics and family into that as well. So muscle doc underscore KR. And um, I have a clinic here in town in Boise, sports medicine and orthopedics. And uh, I train at all the gyms. I love coming to train down here. I train at the Mecca, I train at Axiom, I train at Crunch, at Berserkers. I mean, I'm all over the place, so you can catch me at a workout, say hi, love to chat with you for a minute, but don't interrupt the doc's workout, because usually if the headband's on, it's getting real, so wait till the headband comes off before you ask your questions. Awesome, guys. Y'all have a great day. See you later. This program was designed to develop your overall athleticism. We created Mind Body Fit to help women achieve all over wellness. You'll find tons of articles on nutrition, exercise, and even beauty. Shoulders define your upper body. Just add these two workouts into your split each week to build bigger and more defined delts. With my Kingmaker program, you'll build muscle and a special kind of mental toughness that can overcome any challenge. With MetaBurn 90, all you'll need is a few dumbbells in 30 minutes or less a day to burn fat and achieve peak fitness in a very short, concentrated amount of time. Everything is laid out for you in detail. For positive, you'll find unique pieces that will help you feel your best every single day. Control your world, but it all starts with you. Only at Bodybuilding.com, all access.